Hello everyone, it's Friday, woohoo! Today, um, I'm going to read a different story since we ended our awesome Magic Treehouse nonfiction book. So I thought I would bring back another fractured fairy tale. So we had read Goldilocks Rocks in the beginning, towards the beginning of the year. And then I also read Rapunzel Needs a Haircut a few weeks ago. Now, if you don't remember, a fractured fairy tale is based on the original fairy tale, but it's a little bit different. And it's also told from a different point of view. So the fractured fairy tale we're going to read today is called Seriously, Snow White Was So Forgetful. And it's told by the dwarves. So it's told in first person because they're telling the story. They're also in it as well. We have our author, Nancy Lowen, and illustrated by Gerald Guerlace. And our publisher is Picture Window Books. So I'm so excited to read this story today. And I also have two fun questions for you to do afterwards. And like I told our friends during our Zoom meeting today, this is probably going to be the last activity that Miss Cannon will have you do after reading a story. Since next week is our last week of school, I can't believe it. It went by so fast. So here we go. I hope you enjoy this story. We also might find some vocabulary words that we have had before. I love Snow White dearly. She's a beautiful person inside and out. But honestly, the girl's got a mind like a leaky bucket. So we stopped and talked about this phrase here which is a simile comparing two things using like or as. And we talked about what the dwarf meant by saying her mind is like a leaky bucket. So if we take a look here at this picture, that'll give us a clue. A leaky bucket, the water goes in and it goes right back out. So thinking about the title of the book, how she was so forgetful, we can make an inference by saying that the dwarf means that any information that goes into her brain goes right back out, just like the water in a leaky bucket. Here's the real story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. My name, by the way, is Seven. We dwarfs used to have real names, but Snow White couldn't remember them. So she gave them number names. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. <clears throat> One day, we came home from the mines to find our cottage door open. And if you remember, cottage was a tiny house. Awesome job if you remember that. We thought we were burgled. That means someone like a burglar was going into the house that shouldn't have been in there. It was just a lovely little girl, sound asleep. In the morning, she had quite a story to tell. Hello, she said. I'm Snow White. The queen sent me into the woods, and a hunter was supposed to kill me, but he was nice and let me go. And I wandered a long time in the woods. I guess I'm very pretty, and that's why the queen doesn't like me. I'm Snow White. Would it be all right if I lived with you? I love playing house, and keeping house for real wouldn't be all that different, would it? Did I tell you my name is Snow White? Wow, did she have energy. Life with Snow White was... Interesting. She'd forget to turn on the stove. She'd forget to turn it off. She'd make banana cream pie and forget the bananas. She'd knit scarves that were 10 feet long just because she forgot to stop. On the bright side, she laughed at all of our jokes and she never complained about anything. Years passed. Snow White grew up, 
but she didn't really change. She remained her sweet, charming, forgetful self. Then one day, Five heard a rumor. The queen knows Snow White is alive, he told us. The magic mirror spilled the beans. Now, if you remember, spilled the beans is called an idiom. And that's a kind of figurative language that we learned about. An idiom is one of those silly sayings that doesn't really mean what it says. And if you remember, when someone spills the beans, they tell a secret. We gave Snow White orders to stay inside the cottage. She was not to open the door to anyone. We knew the evil queen would try to hurt her. And I asked in our Zoom, do you think that Snow White will remember those directions? And a lot of them said no. But Snow White quickly forgot Twice we came home to find her lying on the floor. It was clearly the work of the queen. The first time Snow White couldn't breathe, she was wearing a brand new corset that was laced too tightly. A corset is something that women used to wear under their dress that would suck in their waist and make them look super skinny, but they were very tight and it was hard to breathe in them. The second time, she had a poisoned comb in her hair. All the queen had to do was dress up as an old woman and offer something pretty for sale. Any thoughts of being careful went right out of Snow White's head. And here we can make a great text-to-text -text connection because in the original Snow White, she gave her a poisoned apple. We posted reminders. We even wrote, do not open the door in syrup on her pancakes. Here, it's here, on her bowl, in the, on the pitcher, and even on the door. But once again, we came home to find Snow White on the floor. This time, we couldn't help her. There was no corset to loosen or comb to remove. We thought she was dead, killed by a magical spell. And yet, Days passed and she remained as lovely as ever. It's like she's forgotten how to wake up, Five whispered. We couldn't make ourselves bury her, so we placed Snow White in a glass coffin and brought her to a spot on the mountainside. We took turns guarding her. Thank goodness that's not the end of the story. One day, I heard voices in the woods. No, your majesty, it's not time for lunch. We ate our lunch an hour ago. Don't you remember? Oh, right. Silly me. Suddenly, I was face to face with the prince. But he barely noticed me. He couldn't take his eyes off Snow White. What happened to her, he asked. What's her name? I told him the whole story. She's the most beautiful girl I've ever seen, he breathed. Those lips, those eyes. What did you say her name was? Could I take her with me? Now that I've seen her, I don't think I can live without her. What silky hair she has. Tell me again, what's her name? I smiled. The prince reminded me of a certain someone. Like Snow White, he seems very forgetful like her. We were bringing Snow White back to the cottage so the other dwarves could say goodbye. Without warning, the prince stopped and turned around. Hey, what about lunch? He asked. The servant slipped, the coffin slid, and Snow White coughed. I never heard such a beautiful sound. Out of her throat flew a bit of rosy red apple. Rosy red poisoned apple, that is. She sat up. Did someone say something about lunch? She asked. Yes, Snow White married the prince, of course. The queen actually showed up at the reception, if you can believe it. A reception is a party that people have, to have after they get married. Everyone threw dinner rolls at her and booed so loudly that she ran away and was never heard from again. Things are pretty much back to normal now. 
When it gets cold outside, we're grateful for our 10-foot scarves. And every once in a while, we make banana cream pie without any bananas, just for old time's sake. The end. And as I said, I'm sure you can make some great text-to-text -text connections between that story and the original Snow White story. So, here are our two questions that Miss Cannon would like you to answer. So the first one is, would you be friends with Snow White? Why or why not? So even as forgetful as she was, would you be friends with her? And why or why not? And I have our sentence starter here. You would obviously choose would or would not be friends with Snow White because. And then our bonus activity is, if you had the seven dwarves living with you, what would it be like? And I wrote, write at least two things you do with the dwarves and then draw a picture of you and the dwarves. So if you had all those seven dwarves living with you, what are some of the things that you would do with them? I also said in our Zoom meeting that you could even be more creative with this and rename all the seven dwarves names that you would like because they'd be living with you. I can't wait to hear your responses. Thank you for those who joined us on Zoom today, but if you couldn't come, thank you for watching my video. I miss all of you so much, and I can't wait to hear your responses. I hope you have a great weekend. Love you, bye!